Okay, thank you. Okay, so, hi everyone, I am Super Viper T302, and this is going to be Mario Kart 64, all cups 150cc with skips. I know the schedule says pack and roll remix, but, um, change in plans. So, um, this, I'm gonna be playing through all 16 of these tracks on 150cc difficulty, and basically everything is fair game for this run, and you're going to see by, what I mean by everything in a very, very short period of time. So, let's go ahead and get started in 3, 2, 1 video games so there are a lot of shortcuts in this game there's a couple that are intended but most of them are unintended and that's shortcut number one so what I did there was off the, out of that start boost I boosted into DK who is a heavyweight character and because Yoshi is a lightweight character I was able to um, get pushed underneath the floor by DK and then pop out with an incredible amount of upwards momentum, and that allows me to sort of jump over that wall and land into the tunnel below, which skips about half the lap right out of this, right out of the game. So lap two is going to be driven normally, but I'm going to grab this item box from this balloon. There is always a blue shell on that item box, and that is going to help me at the start of lap three here. So until then, I'm going to explain uh, this driving technique I'm going to be doing throughout the entire run. This is these are our mini turbos. Every time I'm drifting, I'm going to oscillate the control stick back and forth at various intervals, and that will change the smoke from white to yellow to orange, and then I can release it again at a small burst of speed. Alright, so there's a shortcut number two. So because the blue shell aims for whoever's in first place, it aimed for me because I was in first place, and that allowed me to do a similar thing to what I did on lap one, and basically just fly over the wall and skip half the lap. So yeah, this game is going to be a very healthy mix of uh, insane glitches and pretty fast driving. Because the mini turbo tech in this game is a lot more complicated than you might think. Okay, so this next track, Moo Moo Farm, does not actually have any, have any usable shortcuts for um, RTA. I believe one was found semi-recently, but um, I don't know if it's applicable for RTA yet. So uh, this track is going to be driven non-shortcut. Um, so I'll use this time to sort of talk about some of the more of the basics behind this game. So first of all, um, character selection. I'm playing as Yoshi. Uh, Yoshi, Toad, and Peach all tie for having the fastest top speed. So they're all the fastest characters to use. Um, but the reason why I'm going to be using Yoshi for this category is simply because he's the quickest to select off the cart menu. And uh, that is going to matter. Um, and I ran into a mole there. The moles are RNG dependent, so I'm going to try to avoid them as much as I can, but um, unfortunately there is that one period of time where I'm going to want to try to squeeze my way through them. But the other random element of this run I'm going to have to worry about is actually um, the items. So there is an item table in the game's memory, so we know the exact percentages of getting certain items. For example, that green shell I just got was a 30% chance in first place. And for the most part, the items I get aren't going to make too much of a difference. But there will be certain shortcuts later in this run that will require me to have specific items. And so uh, I can never guarantee I'll get a specific item, but I can at least maximize my odds of getting one to like maybe up to about 30% or so. Also, you might have saw that I went through a couple of green shells there. In this game, if you fire your own green shell backwards, then you actually can never get hit by it. Other CPUs can, but you can't. And that actually also applies if you shoot a green shell forwards, it, for a few frames it can't hit you. Um, so I usually fire my green shells backwards so that they never hit me. Okay, so next up is Koopa Troopa Beach. This track is also going to be non-shortcut, although there are a couple of time savers I can do here. First thing I should mention is going around the left side of this rock is actually faster than going around the right by a little bit. So coming up, we have this little tunnel jump here. This was actually built into the course, so it is not classified as a skip per se. So this would be allowed in the no skips run because that does exist. And coming up is a glitch that also does not classify as that. If I can pull this off. All right, so I just got a star in first place and uh, that's not normally possible, but what actually happened there was I, there was mismapped polygons to the right of the finish line that mistakenly think you're behind by a lap. So while I'm, I was on those polygons, the game thought for a few frames that I was in eighth place, and so it gave me an eighth place item when I activated the item roulette. So I'm gonna try that again here. 
Right. So again, I got a lightning. You cannot get a lightning in first place. So optimally, you want what something like what I got on the first lap, which is something like a star or a golden mushroom, or basically any kind of speed item that can help you get faster lap times. Ugh. All right. I'm going to have to drive around. Now, the CPUs... Um, one thing about the CPUs is that they are not... They're very mixed with items. They love to drop a lot of bananas and fake item boxes in the most inconvenient spots, but you will never see me get hit by a shell unless it is a shell that I shot out. Because CPUs cannot pick up red or blue shells, and they can pick up green shells, but they will never fire them. So again, if I ever get hit by a shell in this run, it's one that I shot out. And um, as for lightning, I can't get hit by a lightning, but the 8th place CPU has a 1% chance of actually getting a lightning, so it's very unlikely that that will happen. Okay, so Calamari Desert is the first main instance of item RNG in this run that actually matters. And I just spun out there because I missed time my start boost. That actually doesn't matter because I was going to wait at the item boxes anyways. So I'm going to grab an item box and I'm actually going to fall back into 8th place. Um, let's see what I get here. Okay, so triple red shells could be good. Let's see what I get next. Okay, I'm actually gonna ditch these items and try to get a star instead. So the primary item I want here is a star, so I'm gonna try to get that. Uh, there we go. That was a little bit weird, but it worked out. So what I'm gonna do with this star, this shortcut that I'm about to do is actually intentionally programmed into the game. So what you're supposed to do with the star is you're supposed to go through the train tracks to my left, and then as you drive by the finish line, you activate the star and it would advance you forward a lap. But uh, Nintendo is not that great at making games, so they did not take into account the fact that you can actually enter through the tunnel the opposite direction. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to enter through the tunnel here, I'm going to wait until Akiji tells me to turn around, then I'm going to turn around, activate the star, and I just skip a lap. Just like that. So yeah, it's an, it's an intended shortcut, I just did it in a slightly unconventional way. And here I'm going to hold this banana behind me. Um, even though it seems counterintuitive, this is actually reducing lag. So zooming out the camera like this um, will actually reduce lag in certain areas. And uh, right here I'm actually going to reset the console as soon as I cross the finish line because that will skip the trophy ceremony and I'm not required to watch that for this category. It's like, oh, I did not want to go to time trials. Menuing is not exactly the easiest thing in this game. Right, so now we're off to the next cup, the flower cup, and we got a pretty tough shortcut right out of the gate here in a Toad's Turnpike. It might seem kind of weird at first, but it will make sense. So that was actually intentional. Okay. So first try, that skip's actually pretty difficult, so I'm glad I got that first try. So that might have seemed weird there because I just got picked up for going out of bounds, but then I did the exact same thing and didn't get picked up. There's a trick in this game called the Lakitu effect, where when Lakitu is still on the screen as he's after he picks you up, he actually can't pick you up again. And so what I did there was I effectively beat him to that out of bounds sector so that I could jump through and land on the lower portion of the track, which saves a lot of time. And uh, that might have looked weird to you also. Because I did that first shortcut in a very specific way, I actually kind of broke the checkpoint system to where once I jump past the finish line, uh, once I get past the finish line, I can actually just drive a little ways past it, jump out of bounds, and it just warps me halfway across the track. So I don't have to do that um, difficult variant of the shortcut anymore. And as you can see, again, I can just do this on lap three. I just drive a little bit of the finish line, jump out of bounds, and I'm already halfway through the lap. And uh, believe it or not, um, there's been a lot of developments in this game recently. So um, this track, this is actually no longer the fastest route for this track, but I have not had the opportunity to practice any of the newer shortcuts. So I'll make sure to mention them when they come up, but wow, that was really unlucky there. But I'll make sure to mention them when they come up, but there was actually lap skips on this track now, but Again, I don't know how to do them yet, so we're just sticking with what I know. And the cars in this track do run on cycles, but I almost never drive this track the same way twice. So it's understandable that I would run into one there. 
Okay, so this next track, Frappe Snowland, has probably the easiest shortcut in the entire game. If you have the game, you could literally warn this in like two minutes. Yeah, it's fairly broken. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna turn around right at the start here and go back over to the bridge. And now I'm gonna jump from the bridge into the snow without touching the road. And I'm gonna cross the finish line and then go out of bounds and watch what happens in the lower left-hand corner. I just jump from eighth place to first place and I can do this for the remaining two laps and complete the race in. I can complete all three laps. I can complete all three laps of this race faster than a no skips player could actually finish one. Basically, what I'm doing is tricking the game into setting me far back behind the finish line, enough to where it won't decrement my lap by going back across the finish line. So I, so I continue to increment my lap and then I don't decrement it. And basically, it's just fooling the checkpoint system. And yeah, as you can see, very, very quick race. Right, but now we're coming up to one of the first uh, real run-enders of this category. Mountain. So this is the first track in the run where I'll be utilizing wall jumps. So there are certain types of certain types of slanted walls in this game where if you approach them with the proper speed and angle, you can actually jump off of them and gain a significant amount of air, but you only have one to two frames to do this depending on the timing. And the first one, the first one I can attempt is coming up right here. All right, I actually got it. That's really hard to do. So one thing that, wow. So that's the one percent chance lightning I was talking about earlier. Again, it ends up being on PB pace going into Rainbow Road. I'm literally just going to wait at the finish line because I'm not going to get an unrecorded PB. Yay! Is gameplay up? Okay. Hi everybody. Sorry about all that. There were some uh, technical issues, but uh, yeah, uh, you just. You didn't miss too much, just a bunch of broken glitches and whatnot. So I'm in Bowser's Castle now. Uh, this is a track without any shortcuts. Uh, keep your eyes open for Marty on lap three here. Uh, he's behind bars and he's never been let out of his jail cell. Um, so just to give a quick recap, I did some, you did miss uh, Mario Raceway and Sherbert Land were non-shortcuts. Royal Raceway had some minor shortcuts and then Mario Stadium I completed in under 30 seconds due to wall jumps. That's just kind of a recap of uh, what you missed. Uh, it wasn't too much. You could you could easily just find other runs and just watch what happened. But yeah, so uh, we're just about finishing up the Star Cup here, actually, and we're coming up on the third and final reset of the run. And there we go. Okay, so now we're heading off to the fourth and final cup of the game, the f Special Cup. And uh, right out of the gate here, we have uh, DK's Laggy Parkway. Uh, this course is absurdly laggy, but uh, fortunately this track is also going to go by pretty quickly, hopefully. So I'm going to turn around here and make my way over to the cave and line myself up using some visual cues. And uh, the corner of this wall just kind of doesn't exist, so I can drive through it. And the finish line extends ever so slightly out of bounds, so I just skipped an entire lap. And uh, it's actually faster to land back in the cave, but um, it doesn't really matter. Because as long as you still skip the lap, then you're not losing that much time. So I just gotta do that one more time and the race will be over. Be good. Yep. All right. And uh, hopefully I get a banana or a fake item box from one of these item boxes here, because then I can reduce some lag. Oh, I didn't get it. Okay, so the next track, Yoshi Valley, there are a number of different things this track can get on what items I happen to get at the start here. So we're just gonna have to. So I'm gonna actually try to sand back for triple mushrooms, um, 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 which is actually has a better probability of getting it if you're in fifth or sixth place. But if I don't get it, there's a backup route I can do. That's only a little bit slower. So let's see what happens here. All right, that is not triple mushrooms. 
That is also not triple mushrooms. That is the wrong kind of triple. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the back up right. I can actually just kind of jump off to the left here and skip a lap. That only works if you take the far right path. Right, so now I can uh, make my way over here and do this little hairpin jump, which is for some reason also not qualified, classified as a shortcut. So now with this star, I'm gonna attempt the uh, shortcut I would have done on laps one and two if I had gotten triple mushrooms. You just need any speed item for this trick to work. So I'm gonna line myself up using some visual cues on the grass and the background. And I'm gonna use this star to hop the fence here and aim for that dark line. And if you get that bounce left after hitting the dark line, you got it. And uh, somehow that just skips a lap. Okay, so the next track, Banshee Boardwalk, does not have any shortcuts that can be done non-task either. But I'm taking a look at my uh, CPU rankings, and I'm noticing that I have all three heavyweight characters, Wario, DK, and Bowser, in the top four. So the reason why this is important is when you select your character in the character select menu, there's a count. You the game will select two other characters to be your rivals. And you have a primary rival and a secondary rival, and um, they usually drive faster than the other CPUs, and they rubber band harder. Um, and for the case of the Special Cup, I actually want one of the heavyweights to be one of my rivals, and I have perfect rivals right now. So I want either Wario, DK, or Bowser to finish in first place on this track, and then I'm going, and then I would want to finish in third. And that might seem kind of weird because I'm just wasting time, but that's actually going to allow me to set up a really, really cool strat for the start of Rainbow Road that will hopefully net me some time save. And uh, again, it looks like I have pretty good rivals, but I have to make sure the CPUs stay in check and that I don't drop any items to accidentally slow them down. And by the way, um, if you, by the way, there is a published task of this game on taskvideos.org that I would recommend you check out immediately after this run. So um, it's actually best case scenario for me that Wario finishes in first, but I would be content with any of the heavyweights finishing. And it looks like Wario might be my primary rival, so that's a really good thing to see. All right, so we're coming up on the finish line here. Wario is riding my tail, so that's perfect, actually. So I'm going to actually wait at the finish line. I'm going to let Wario finish before me, and then I'm going to let DK finish. Or, or Peach, actually. Peach is kind of riding close with him. All right, this should be fine. And there we go. So that might seem a little bit uh, counterintuitive, because I basically just wasted time at the finish line, but... Uh, trust me when I say that you are going to be amazed by what is about to happen. All right. So uh, remember that uh, CPU jump I did off of DK at the start of Luigi Raceway? Thanks, Wario. So that does actually net time save over doing the uh, regular shortcut that you probably all know about on this Rainbow Road. And this is actually really good because now I have a green shell, which uh, means I will actually be able to attempt something that's even more of a time save at the end of the lap. So we just kind of have to wait here. This is normally a five minute long track in no skips, but with skips you can cut it down by about three minutes which is really, really nice, because this track is a bit of a drag. So what I'm going to attempt to use, use this green shot for is I'm going to attempt to launch myself over the side, um, right around here. Uh, this requires a pretty specific lineup and positioning and angle and all that. All right, got it. So what this is going to do is accomplish something similar to what you saw on some other tracks where I'm going to cross the finish line while out of bounds and then I'm going to be placed far back enough behind the finish line 
to where the game's not going to decrement my lap. So now I'm an entire lap ahead. And now I have even more time to get another green shell and do that exact same thing. Oh, I just didn't press the Z button there. That was really cool. And time. So my timer says 30.01. That actually ties my marathon PV. Uh, my actual PV is a 29.27. And the world record is a 25 of a 2509 by Abney 317. So, uh. Oh, I froze because I dropped frapped over 3,000 frames. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I am. Yeah, so I am out all the tech issues. I'll definitely, tr we'll definitely try to make sure. Definitely try to make sure those are ironed out for later. But a quick plug: if you want to uh, um, do get competitive with time trials for this time trials for this game, uh, join MarioKart64.com. I myself don't do time trials, but there's a fairly active community for them. So with that, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, this was a bit of a crazy start, and hopefully, so uh, I will, I will see you later in the marathon, and I'll throw it on over to the host.